Uh, so, like uh, I think we said earlier, is the building is designed for three large buildings. The last building, which is all based on business van, will be a mirror image of this building on this uh, right behind this one. Uh, we actually do a lot of conservation. We actually just planted uh, with the North Carolina Forestry Department. We just planted 6,830 trees. Uh, so uh, another. About 25 to 35 acres are actually in conservation. So actually, you are actually standing on another roof. Uh, this is the, if you notice coming into the building, the grid system. Uh, if you notice a different color, these grids are a different color. That's the straight outside air. If you look at these louvers, you can tell that we're actually taking in part of this as far as straight outside air. But you'll see momentarily that uh, on the other side of this, this is what we call our recycling. So we have a plantum that sits between the uh, first floor and the second floor that's about 15 feet, runs the full length of the data hall and the building. Uh, and what it does is it allows us to recycle the hot air. Uh, we do that for a couple of things. One is in the summer, in the winter time, we actually use it for heating of the admin area. But more importantly is we actually use it to dry out outside air. As everyone knows, we have very humid air here. So we use that hotter air that's obviously less humid it's just went through the server process as far as cooling. We use that air to actually dry it out so that we can inject water back into it to cool it down, which you'll see in that process shortly. So one of the things that uh, Facebook has also done is they've uh, broken the theory of typical data center design. And the fact that we're able to do a lot of redundancy within our uh, building, like from the standpoint upstairs on the cooling fans, we can lose one of those rows and it doesn't affect us. We've also done the same thing from power. We actually have a, what we call a reserve bus in our power system so that we can actually switch between primary and reserve bus and still provide the IT power if we have some potential or some maintenance work that has to be done. In a previous data center, you actually had to switch to a UPS or to a generator to actually do that. Uh, it actually is a finger that you choose, but uh, it's based on the finger you choose. So. So one of the other cool things from a techie standpoint is uh, uh, we were one of the first data centers to actually de deliver 10 gigabits to the server on fiber optic cable. This is our network row. This actually serves all of the traffic to all the servers within this data hall. Again, as you can tell, we only have one network row on this versus the other for this data hall. Uh, again, this is primarily uh, traffic that's coming from our servers to actually write this data out. So basically what happens is, is that uh, when when that older or when it's determined that it's an older or falls into the cold storage category, that data is actually sent to a particular uh, server and a drive written out. Once that drive fills up, it shuts that drive off, turns another one on, and starts the cycle all over again until that one's full. So that's the 30,000 foot level of how that works. So if I have an old file that I'm not this building, we actually uh, are our design and building a community around those. So one of the ideas that we're 